The Mountain Royals DLC has been announced by Age of Empires now, so I just want to thank uh, World's Edge for giving me some early access uh, to the DLC. And uh, this comes with two new civilizations. So the Mountain Royals comes with the Armenians and the Georgians, as well as a little bit of a reworked Persians. So we've got a build order here. This one's for the Armenians, and it's uh, very much in line with latest fashions of... Uh, Sort of white phosphorus you put in rushes so it's a 12 minute 45 fast castle into warrior monks and scorpions so we'll talk about the warrior monks later um, in a bit more detail but uh, what we're doing with this build is starting off with six on sheep and then we're going to go two on two wood um, I tend to build it where there's some gold accessible as well just because it means you can delay building a, another drop-off point um, so we have mule carts for Georgians and Armenians, uh, which are mobile drop-off buildings. So, um, it's a bit like the ox cart in Age of Mythology. It actually follows you uh, uh, with your villagers as well. You can kind of task the mule cart to the wood. Uh, and it'll sort of keep uh, keep your efficiency, efficiency up, basically. So, really, really good. Uh, but you get all your upgrades from there. Um, Okay, so now we've got the two on wood. We're going to have one to lure the first boar or elephant in this case. It does work with boar as well, uh, not just elephants. I have tested it in that respect. Uh, and then we're going to add another one onto the food under the TC. And then the next villager to come out from then is going to go and make a house and lure the, the next boar in. Um, so the Armenians have got some pretty crazy bonuses. Uh, they've got the mule carts. Uh, cost 25% less, they're pretty cheap. Uh, the technologies from the mule cart are 25% more effective. So for um, double bit axe, for example, rather than having 20% efficiency, it's going to be 25% uh, bonus. Uh, they have 45, 45 churches instead of monasteries. The first one gives you a free relic. And your black, uh, barracks units are available one age earlier, which is pretty strong. Um, but as you can see on the build order here, we've just lured that second boar and we're starting to add villagers on to berries. So we're going to be adding five on berries and we're pushing all our deer in as well. But yeah, Armenia's got some pretty crazy bonuses, um, which is helping us with this particular build getting up to that 12 minutes, uh, 45 fast castle into scorpions and warrior monks. So warrior monks are only exclusive to the Armenians. Um, Georgians don't get them and they are pretty strong they've, they've got 80 health 11 attack and i think it's one and one armor so you know nothing to be sniffed at if you like you know they're pretty good um so the good thing with that is we were able to um obviously not need a barracks and um and a, so we can use a market instead or build a market instead um, for our two age up buildings, so it's quite a bit of a wood saving there. Um, okay, so yes, now we've got a five on berries, and we're going to finish off with just by adding another three onto wood. So that'll give us 20 population, and then we're going to add uh, research loom after that. And then we should be able to click up. And all those villagers under the TC, there's nine villagers that's just going to stay there collecting all the food from the sheep and the deer until we're uh, able to get up now when I was trying to do this originally I was doing the scorpions and uh, and you'll probably see it on this video scorpions and warrior monk rush but I was kind of following it up with uh, a bit of a uh, sort of like a TC drop it's not a TC it's the fortified church uh, and the reason being is the fortified church acts a bit like a town center in terms of it's got a similar sort of HP, range, attack, and all that sort of stuff. Yes, it attacks. Um, and you can essentially do some aggressive sort of TC dropping with them. So that was the plan. But um, it's for an all-in strategy like this one, it's too much of an investment to then send 10 villagers forward <laughs> trying to do some uh, like TC dropping. Um, so, yeah kind of ignoring that i think you're best using them as defensive buildings um and just going for the 
uh, scorpions and warrior monks, and then add some mangonels to take down the buildings uh, later on. So that's what we're doing. Whilst we're on our way to the feudal age, there's nothing to do, so that's why I'm jabbering on. Uh, but once we hit the castle age, we're going to make uh, sorry, once we hit the feudal age, we're going to make a blacksmith and a market, and we're going to send two new villages over to gold. So we're trying to get them on this back end of the gold so that they can get to the mule cart quite easily. See, the mule cart moved on its own then. Um, pretty good. But as you can see, market blacksmith on the way down. We're using three to make the market. Uh, just because it'll ensure the market is up faster because we're going to be selling that uh, selling that stone so it's going to stop us from having our idle time if we've got three on um, build in there so just one more to come out to gold and then we should be able to click up as you can see we've got plenty of food like so sell the gold and we've clicked up without any idle time at that particular point we did have I think four seconds at the end of feudal or a few seconds from somewhere anyway but yeah in terms of the actual castle ages there absolutely none at all so uh, when you're going forward or to the castle age or going up to the castle age uh, send four villages to wood uh, from your sheep and then all the rest of them go on to gold um, that should make sure that you've got enough wood to make a siege workshop and a fortified church, I forgot what it was called then, um, as soon as you hit the castle age. Ideally you want your fortified church to be based around where your main economy is, so near your gold. Um, ideally, just to give them a bit of protection, and obviously the siege workshop can go wherever it, it needs to go. So, um, probably don't really need that many scorpions before you start going forward. Um, because scorpions wreck feudal age armies. Um, I think the only problem is is you've got to really make sure they're protected if uh, your opponent decides to go full aggress aggressive um, oops, scouts play. Um, that could lead you with, give you some issues, but um, if that happens, you can probably get a, a stable um, a barracks down and just add a few spears. You, you wouldn't need to add loads. Okay, so taking some villagers off of the berries, they're going to make the um, fortified church and the siege workshop. So, as you can see, we're not actually making any more villagers. One of those builds. One of those builds. I think, obviously, with a couple more villagers, you probably could uh, afford to maintain villager production, but then you're sacrificing um, the. Uh, up time the fast up time so yeah it's kind of uh intended to be one of those all in builds but yeah you, you could have easily added a, another couple of villages on here just to make it a little bit easier a bit better um you may have even got away with not doing doing loom when we did add another villager you know, obviously you would have needed another house for that but probably could have delayed loom until feudal age uh so as you can see we've got warrior monks or warrior priests, I always call them warrior monks, warrior priests and scorpions coming out now. Uh, so as I, as I say, we're not going to need loads of those, but then you just go forward uh, with them as soon as you've got a few uh, together and start wrecking the enemy. I mean, to be fair, at this point against a, an actual player, you'll have enemy raiding you um, or trying to get in. Um, but the scorpions will make light work of archers. It's just the scouts that are, be, that are going to be the main problem. But if you've, if you've fully walled in, you should be fine. Um, like we are here. But quite a, a mass of uh, archers coming forward here from the AI. And let's just see how well these scorpions do against those. Pretty well. There's only two of them. They're making quite light work of those. Uh, but the warrior priests. And here's a warrior monk. A um, little bit more information about those. There's no elite version. Uh, but they are upgraded via all of the infantry techs and also all of the relevant uh, monk techs. So that kind of makes up for the lack of elite version really. So um, you can get extra HP from the monastery. So that will bump them up to 95 HP. Uh, and yeah, I think you can get that in the, in the castle age as well, uh, which is pretty good. Uh, have some really tanky units then, but... Um, as you can see, just go in, do some raiding, 
Uh, this is where I was trying to do the like the douchey stuff. I only came forward with a couple of villagers to do it, and had the fortified church, which which is good in some respects. Maybe you can do this, but don't overinvest with you know ten villagers. Just get a couple down, uh, garrison them. They would still act like a tower, I suppose. Then, uh, but you'll also have a forward base to reinforce your your monks, your priests. Um, I don't think I mentioned as well, the priests actually heal each other. Uh, so you can get a, quite a big mass of them together and just heal each other up and have an invincible army. <laughs> Which is quite funny. Um, archers will wreck them though. This is where I decided to come forward and, and garrison. But I actually tried this in a 1v1. Um, not great. It probably does work doing this sort of uh, TC drop-in tactic if you're against a normal civ. I did it against Georgians and they had the horse, um, the mule carts as well so they were very easily able to just reposition to a different wood line or whatever. So it probably doesn't work against the Georgians but uh, certainly against a normal civ you might be alright uh, doing that but uh, that's it for this one guys. See you on the next one.